Hey everybody, Andrew Hogue here, your security, privacy, and forensics expert. Today I'd like to show you a little experiment I did with Copilot for iOS. As many of you probably know, GitHub released an AI coding assistant called GitHub Copilot. And a lot of the stuff that you see out there today is focused more on Python or web applications. And so I would say the support for mobile is really in the early stages. But that's really where I like to focus since I'm the co-founder of NowSecure, a mobile app security testing company. Now, one of the things I want to share real quick is that I consider myself an occasional programmer. And what do I mean by that? Well, I used to code professionally about 20 years ago. My degree is in computer science and I've programmed in many different languages. So I do code multiple times a week, mostly on side projects. And a lot of it is in JavaScript and I'm trying to learn TypeScript. But recently I decided to learn Swift UI and iOS programming in general. And so I've been taking this great course by Angela Yu on Udemy that maybe some of you have taken. But I mention all of this just so that you know that my experience as a programmer and my experience as an iOS programmer is actually pretty nominal right now. And so if you look at the code and get a good chuckle, at least I bought myself some room. What I really want to focus on today is that GitHub Copilot and really any large language model is basically an amazing autocomplete. And that's really a big understatement. But I think it's really important as programmers and technologists that we don't forget that. It's going to be really simple for the general public to kind of gloss over that and think AI is sentient or aware, or even that AI understands what it's writing. But what you have to keep in mind is it actually doesn't know what it's writing. And it's looking at these large language models and doing statistics to say, because you typed this and it's surrounded with a project that looks like this, the most likely thing that you should code next is the following. And so as Thomas Domkey, the CEO of GitHub loves to say, co-pilots mean that you, the programmer, are the pilot. And so you have to understand what it's doing and take a critical eye at that. So I want to show you an example of that. One of the great things about Angela's course is all of her projects are online and open source. Now, since large language models are trained on data generally available in the public, that means that the projects that we're doing here have likely been consumed by those models. And so the autocomplete is probably going to be super specific. Anyway, I'm kind of giving away the details, so let's just dive right in and I'll show you what this is all about. So if you're fairly new to iOS programming like me, just make sure that you've installed the latest version of Xcode. I have a blog and video out there that I'll link to in the comments on how to do that. And then you want to come in and create a new project. And you're going to select an app project and then give it some project name. And I would suggest just to follow along with this pattern is to give it your name and then call it card because that's what Angela did in one of her demo applications. And then you'll make sure that you have Swift UI and the Swift language checked. So I've already done that. I'm going to cancel out here. Now, one of the things I'm going to touch on in a later video is how to do Copilot natively inside Xcode. What I've heard anecdotally is it's a bit challenging as it's not directly integrated right now. And so one of the interesting things that you can do is use Xcode for a lot of the things that it does great at, right? Starting these projects, uh, putting in different autocompletes, fixing protocols, things of that sort. But you could pop over to a different editor and Xcode will actually pick up those changes after you save them. And so I know a lot of developers use VS Code. I'm just not really a VS Code person. I'll actually end up doing a series on that and at least installing it and showing you. But what I'm going to do today is use a combination of Xcode and then NeoVim. And I've configured NeoVim to work with Copilot. Okay, so here we've got the Xcode up and running. And again, one of the amazing things about a bespoke editor for a particular language is we've got all the autocompletes all of the different helpers that we need to add things. And importantly, we've got this live preview. But let's go ahead and pop over to NeoVim real quick. So I've just changed into that directory and I'm gonna open up the content view.swift. So I'm really only a few days into tinkering with this. And what I've generally done is just kind of gone to a piece of code, uh, started the insert mode and then see what happens. But what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm just gonna come in here and then I'm going to write a comment, um, create a new Z stack with a green background. And why am I saying that? I'm saying that because that's what Angela is prompting us to do as the next challenge in this particular project. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. 
and I'm going to, nope, just do that. And now I'm just gonna wait a second and see what happens. So the power of video editing is I didn't actually just wait a second, I waited a full two minutes that I ended up cutting out here. And I wanna share this with you just for full transparency. What happened? Well, I put the comment in the wrong place. Instead of being inside the view, I was one level up and then the autocomplete wouldn't work. And that's a really important thing to point out. Like a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, they're highly edited. And first of all, I want people to know that like I'm not that good of a programmer and I'm constantly looking things up on the internet, let's be honest, on Stack Overflow. And that's where Copilot can be really, really amazing. But I sat here and the autocomplete wasn't working like it did previously this morning. And so I thought about it for a little bit, finally figured out what was happening and then moved on. And again, I just wanted to be honest about what was going on here instead of editing it out and making it look like everything is just smooth sailing all the time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in a comment here and say, create a new Z stack with a green background. And I'm just gonna say this because that's what Angela mentioned uh, as a challenge in the project. And then let's see if we can get Copilot to make a recommendation. Okay, so it took a second and let's take a look at what we've got. So we've got a, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and accept this and let's come up here a little bit and see what we've got. All right, so we've got a Z stack, got some colors in there, ignored the uh, safe area. Interestingly, uh, they've put in a V stack with my name uh, for an image, which I don't have right now, it's fine. Uh, they got my name correct, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> Shockingly, they put me in as an iOS developer, which is very far from the truth. Uh, and then there's actually an open comment here. So this code is actually not going to compile. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and undo that for a second. And let's take a look again and just see if there are any other options. So we've got this and I had to go out a little bit on my Zoom. Okay, so we can see that there are three other options. Let's see if we can cycle through and look at the other options. So here's our second option. Um, here's a simpler one with uh, Andrew and founder of Now Secure, which is actually also accurate. So that's kind of interesting pulling that from the web, I guess. Uh, and then back to iOS developer. So um, you can kind of tell here that at the end there's an info view object or struct uh, and it doesn't actually complete on any of these. So I'm gonna go ahead just for simplicity and go with the founder of Now Secure. And so I'm gonna accept that. And then just cause I know this is gonna break. Well, I'll just show you this real quick. So if you hit save and come over to Xcode, you're gonna see that everything went sideways here, right? Because we don't actually have code that will compile. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this info view. Um, because the V stack is already in there, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. And then it looks like we're gonna be missing some parentheses. Okay, so now we've got uh, our two structs and I'm gonna go ahead and save this, okay? So now we don't get any errors in terms of the actual structure of the code, but the build is still gonna fail because it can't find the info view struct or scope. So let's come back and see if Copilot can help us with that. So I'm gonna just create a comment here and say, create info view struct, okay? And now we have a struct. It looks like, you know, again, I'm new to this programming, so it looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this, and then let's go ahead and save it. And then let's pop back over here. So now we've got this uh, info view struct, and I hit build and now it looks like it's built properly. So let's go ahead and unpause the preview and see what we've got. Okay, so now we can see that quite a bit came together for us. Uh, I didn't really have to do any coding. I just had to fix a few things. And if you go out and look at Angela's example, this is actually what the uh, sample app looks like. So one of the things that I wanna emphasize here is that I think there's a lot of this code that ended up getting completed because of course there's projects out there that really match this exact structure. 
I thought it was pretty interesting that it found actual information about myself, perhaps from the name of the uh, application. As you may have noticed in the comments, um, I use a different name when I set up my computer. Uh, it's a sci-fi reference for those of you that like Neil Stevenson. So it clearly didn't just grab it from my name because my name on the system is Hero Protagonist, but it grabbed Andrew Hoag. It actually went through and found some information about me and, and popped it in there. But it actually didn't realize that it was missing an info view struct. And of course the compiler told us that or that the coding environment told us that. And then it was really easy to go out there and prompt and say create this, this info view. And it went out there, looked at code on the internet and said, well, this is the most likely thing that you should have there because based on the rest of your code, this is what I've seen other people do. And so it put an info view in there. Now, if it had put that struct in from some other project that was completely different, the copilot really wouldn't have known the difference. And you see, you can cycle through different suggestions and then you'd have a very, very different looking application. But this is a really great example of kind of like a direct hit on autocomplete because I basically cloned her project and I'm just putting in my own information. So that's really what I want to leave people with. Copilot is absolutely amazing. It, it hits that kind of product fit where people have that like delightful aha moment and I have it time and time again. But because I'm teaching myself a new language, I really need to focus on like what's going on here? Where did this code come from? Uh, should I use it? Is it going to work? And right now I'm jumping between two different IDEs, which as you can tell, that's pretty cumbersome. Um, but anyway, I, in case this is useful, I just wanted to share it with folks and uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be doing quite a bit of these on my journey as I try to learn Swift iOS programming, as I try to do it with co-pilots, and then of course, integrating security along the way. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.